Hey y'all, Scott here. You wouldn't believe it. I was on a train, it crashed, and now I'm washed up on this deserted island. I really shouldn't have worn this shirt today. Well, at least I packed smart. I have all the necessities I need to survive right here in this bag. Oh man, damn it, this is all I brought. Desert islands are the number one source of actually finding time to play Brink. They're great, I love them, can't get enough. This is a conversation every self-respecting video game players have with their friends and doctor at some point. If you could only play one game for the rest of your life, what would you play? Or to add more context to the question, if you were stranded on a deserted island and could only bring one or a couple of games with you to play for as long as you're isolated from society, what games would you bring? I mean, I'm gonna be on this island for the rest of my life, apparently. Might as well actually play Brink. Now, Desert Island games are tricky to pick. They don't necessarily have to be my all-time favorite games. They're more so games that I wouldn't really get tired of. If I only had five games with me on this island, what games would last me the longest? The concept is sort of pretty flawed when you think about it, because, oh, I can only bring, like, five games with me to the island, but I also have to have a TV, all the consoles these games play on, electricity, oh! And you can also own hundreds of games digitally on a lot of these consoles, so limiting it to a specific number of games Games. doesn't make much sense, but who cares, it's fun to discuss. So let's just go with the logic that I can only have five games, even if the consoles I have can store hundreds of games on their hard drives. Well, if I'm gonna be on this deserted island for the rest of my life, it would be nice to know what games I should have shipped to me so I can have something to play. Uh, I have a lot of time on my hands, so why not? Hi gang, it's Scott's inner voice here. I just realized what I said was really f***ing stupid. If I can ship games to the island, then I can ask somebody for help. So I'm gonna make sure I can hear my inner voice. Well, heat stroke struck. Well, let's talk about my five desert island games. My five desert island games, all right. So I think the obvious choices would be everlasting titles, open worlds, games that don't specifically have an end, or if they do, it's a good few hundred hours away. See, that's why we have to head to howlongtobeat.com. I love visiting this website for my daily dose of, yeah, I'm not playing that. A game with hours in the triple digits is my worst nightmare, but that's what we're looking for here. The last thing I want is next time I get stranded, I pull Order 1886 out of my bag. All right, let's look at the longest games documented on this site. I'm not in the mood to play Football Manager 2017 for the rest of my life, so let's just keep scrolling down. And the first game on this list I have any affinity for is Animal Crossing New Leaf. Really, any Animal Crossing game would be a good fit to be played for eternity, especially to maintain a sense of community while dying slowly here. Instead of living actual life trying to survive on an island, how about living life leisurely in a town full of animals? Playing this would be a fun escape from the reality of being stranded and any of them except for New Horizons where you're stranded. The thing with Animal Crossing for me though, is I can only play it for like an hour at the most per day, is the kind of game I can pop in for a bit, see what's going on, get a few things done and pop out. Which is why I'm gonna pick the original GameCube title as my first Desert Island game for the simple reason that it is still Animal Crossing and I can unlock Wario's Woods. Hell yeah, there are about 20 NES games you can collect and play here. Now, some of them are obtained within the game, some of them you need codes to unlock, and some of them you need cheat devices to get, but hey, the Desert Island rules don't say I can't use cheating devices alongside my game, so yes, I pick Animal Crossing for its everlasting play value and for also being more than one game. You may ask why I wouldn't pick any of the titles after the GameCube one, those have far more to do. And my answer is, I can play Wario's Woods in this one, it's still Animal Crossing and I can play more games within it. Like I said, Animal Crossing was the first game on this list I had really much affinity for at all. Like the top 10 longest titles to beat on this website, I don't believe in these games. We gotta go farther down to see really any games much closer to my sort of speed, not just mindless grinding or 800 hours worth of fluff for football Ball Manager 2017. And wouldn't you know, we're starting to see some open world games here. So for my next title, we gotta go with an open world here, but there are so many options. I think the best potential candidates for me would be a Grand Theft Auto, a Red Dead Redemption, an Elder Scrolls, or Breath of the Wild. I haven't played Witcher 3, I haven't played a Fallout, these are just the main open worlds I'm thinking of. Spider-Man PS4 was somewhat considered since it has such a fun open world and story and mechanics, but it doesn't really have that same make your own fun mentality the other games have. Or yeah, you can have a blast playing these games through to the end, but you can also wander off the beaten path and screw around, live your life separate from the story, make your own game. Spider-Man doesn't really have that. And look at something like Skyrim. When you beat Skyrim, you still didn't really beat Skyrim. You can play it again, doing things in completely different ways, or just explore new areas, try new things, create your own experience. Grand Theft Auto is a series I love not playing for the game and just playing for the sandbox. Entering cheat codes, trying to last as long as I can with a big fat wanted rating with police flipping out, chasing me around. And Red Dead Redemption is pretty much that. But Cowboys? It's a nice flavor change from GTA every now and then, so really, these both kind of are on the same level for me. Breath of the Wild is an open world masterpiece. 
that makes all other open world games feel shallow in comparison with how you can go anywhere. Its physics make the world feel alive, and you have so many tools at your disposal to make combat and exploring fun and exciting each and every time. But a lot of that magic that Breath of the Wild has isn't nearly as poignant on a second playthrough. Don't get me wrong, this is one of the greatest games I've ever played. I'll always be discovering new stuff with this game until the day I die, but the joy of discovery and exploration isn't as wondrous as your first playthrough. And while you can screw around a lot here, it's a bit more fun to screw around in something like Grand Theft Auto for me. You can make a car fly in these games. Now, my personal GTA of choice will always be San Andreas, but 5 has a lot more stuff to do, a lot more little mini games to play. You have the entire online component to play around with too if for some ungodly reason the sand has an ethernet port. But Breath of the Wild has so much I haven't seen, it could last me a solid year of playing it. But then afterwards, I'd probably need to you know, not play it for a good year, at the very least have it be fresh enough to jump back in. And then there's Skyrim, the only Elder Scrolls game I've played, and not a ton at that, but still, I could get some time out of this one. This is definitely a candidate and a half. So which of these would I want on the island? I think Grand Theft Auto is almost mandatory. I think Breath of the Wild is the better game than all the GTAs I've played, but I can just foresee Grand Theft Auto lasting me much longer in terms of the sandbox element of it all. Yeah, I can screw around in Breath of the Wild, but screwing around in Grand Theft Auto can lead to pandemonium. I'll pick five just because it has more variety and stuff to do than San Andreas, and I'm also not banking on the online portion of GTA 5 here, depending on internet on an island is tough stuff, man. Well, you can't have one without the other. Animal Crossing and Grand Theft Auto 5. But it's gonna be a bit trickier to pick the last three here. Uh, we're throwing How Long to Beat off to the side, and now we're just gonna go with my primal instincts. What games I know I'll have a good time with for eternity. Well, I think a puzzle game would be a good idea. I mean, these things just keep on going. Tetris, Dr. Mario, Poyo Poyo, games that are infinitely replayable. They may not give you thousands of hours of pure joy immediately within like a 168 hour week, but they'll probably give you thousands of hours of killing time over a couple years. A Tetris game is the easiest pick. I do enjoy Dr. Mario, but there's no one Dr. Mario title that I can single out saying, damn, now this is a meaty game, look at all this content. Like yeah, I can continually play some standard Dr. Mario in all of the titles, but no specific game in the series is like brimming with modes or different ways to play. And in comparison, we can look at something like Tetris DS or Puyo Puyo Tetris. Damn, these are meaty games, look at all this content. These games nail the standard gameplay for their puzzle series, and on top of that, offer tons of fun side modes and gimmicks. However, even though I adore these Tetris titles, my favorite puzzle game may just be Tetris Attack on the Super Nintendo. It ain't Tetris, but this is my happy game. This is something I can zone out with and play for hours. It's a great stress reliever for me. I feel weird considering this to be one of my favorite SNES games, but just let me have this. Even then, while I absolutely absolutely adore Tetris Attack, I have to give the next slot to Puyo Puyo Tetris. While I have the most embarrassing feelings towards Attack, and DS had fun NES game aesthetics, uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris has so many different modes, like a story mode, combination modes bringing together Puyo Puyo and Tetris, you can play it as just a Tetris game or just a Puyo Puyo game if you want to, there's 4 player multiplayer on one screen, it just has so much and is pretty much the puzzle game that I could play forever if I had to. So, what else is there? Well, I think the obvious one for many would be Mario Maker. Super Mario Maker 2 lets us create our own levels, but it also comes back with pretty much a fully featured 2D Mario game with its story mode. Yeah, there's a lot of premium Nintendo made levels here, so you pretty much get a full blown Mario game with this, on top of a level maker and an infinite amount of user created stages. But here's the thing, I'm crafting this specific list with the idea that there's no online connectivity on this island. Without online, Super Mario Maker 2 is just a great fun Mario game and that's it, it's bullshit. No online takes a big chunk of the value out of Mario Maker, but not all of it. We still have a fully featured Mario game here, and we can make our own levels, and you know you can just screw around with this forever. You run out of levels to play, you can make your own, damn it. How about this? I'll make another list of Desert Island games where I can access online, but this current one, yeah, we're offline only here. Because Mario Maker 2 loses a lot of its appeal here, I'm gonna have to say I'd pick Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World if I'd allow for game compilations to be on this list. Jesus, man, this is a mess. All right, don't say, oh, if you're not including compilations, how can Animal Crossing possibly count? That's where I got gotcha. you. The genre of this game isn't game compilation. The other games you can play there are bonuses. They're unlocks. You can unlock the original Metroid and Metroid Prime by connecting Metroid Fusion. Does that make Metroid Prime a compilation? I swear to God, please agree with me. When the entire point of a game is to be a compilation, I think that means it's out of the running in this list specifically. It takes a lot of the fun out of trying to pinpoint exactly five games you can play when some of them are blatant collections. But don't worry, we'll make a Desert Island compilation list. So I still want a Mario game here. I would have done Mario Maker 2, but that's disqualified. I would have done Mario All-Stars plus Mario World, but that's disqualified. So I have decided to go with a Mario game that's not my favorite, but in my opinion is so infinitely replayable that I kinda have to pick it. 
Super Mario 64 may be a bit wonky to play today, but it is one of the most fun games to pop back in continuously. It's not necessarily an open world title, but with how much fun it is to screw around and explore and try new tricks, it feels like one. Not only is it fun to recomplete this game over and over again, it's just fun to find exploits, glitches, trying to speed run the game. It can be frustrating and a bit outdated at times, but I believe 64 is probably the most replayable Mario game. Sure, Odyssey is great, but similarly to Breath of the Wild, a lot of the magic of playing that game came from the first playthrough when everything was brand new. It's still an incredibly fun game, but Mario 64 has more fulfilling and memorable missions. It's more fun to replay continuously. I probably like Odyssey more than 64 overall, but I feel like I'd weirdly get more out of 64 by having it on a deserted island. And I know, my favorite game is Galaxy, and while I'd love to bring it, I could play and beat that game for breakfast every day, I wouldn't get tired of it. 64 is more open and in nature, suits the desert island lifestyle more than Galaxy to me. Alright, one more game to go, and of course, it has to be a Smash Brothers. I'm one of those f***ing creeps who enjoys the single player offerings in each Smash game, so that's why I'm picking Brawl, because I'm a f***ing creep. Why am I picking Super Smash Brothers Brawl for a desert island? Well, in my opinion, I feel like it was the best single player game in the series. You have a painfully long story mode, you have so many collectibles with trophies, stickers, music tracks, you can build your own lame stages, play demos of old Nintendo games, watch the E3 trailer until the end of time. There's just so much here to do and unlock, and while Brawl's core gameplay is definitely weaker than other Smash Brothers titles, it's still Smash Brothers at the end of the day. On a desert island, if I collected and unlocked everything in Brawl, I feel like I could delete my save file and start trying to unlock everything again, and it would still be a pretty fun time. It would feel a bit monotonous, but the unlocks and collectibles are cool enough where I'd still enjoy myself. I feel like if I would do that with Smash for 3DS, Wii U, or Ultimate, it would be incredibly boring, the collectibles aren't nearly as enjoyable. If online was in the picture, I'd probably pick Ultimate, but for the offline non-compilation list, this is what I get. But Scott Scott might ask, what about compilations? Alright, if I could include video game compilations in my list of desert island games, here are the top 5 for me. Rare Replay, I mean it has 30 games, I mean some of these games, I'm sure you've been resting easy knowing nobody would ever shit on Attic Attack, but here we are. I mean it's 30 games, not all of them are gonna be winners, but there's enough variety, great iconic games and bonus objectives and features to make this game easily worthy of the list. Namco arcade games make me squee, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Dig Dug, Rally X, Gapless, I never get tired of these things, so obviously a Namco Museum has got to be here. I'll go with Namco Museum Virtual Arcade, look at all these games! Plus you got Miss Pac-Man, that game's totally up in the air whether or not it's included in Namco Museums. I'm not gonna play this collection constantly, but these are games I can play here and there forever yet never get tired of. This is definitely in the same league as the puzzle games I was talking about earlier. Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World, these are some of the greatest games of all time, plus Mario the Lost Levels. Again, these are games I will never get tired of, and there are five games here, so I really could have picked just Mario 3 or World by themselves for my Desert Island collection, but with this cartridge, I get five of them. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, so this is my favorite Sega Genesis compilation. It includes pretty much most of the major Genesis games I would ever want. All the Sonics, all the Streets of Rages, Vector Man, Comic Zone, plus unlockables, arcade games, a Master System game, achievements, videos, there's so much here. Now, there was a Genesis Collection released on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, but this one isn't nearly as fun. Sure, it has Gunstar Heroes, but no Sonic 3 or Sonic and & Knuckles, and no fun unlockables. Yeah, I'm still partial to Sonic's Ultimate. And finally, Halo the Master Chief collection. You get a bunch of some of the greatest first person shooters of all time, and these games are from the 21st century. They're big full games. Halo 1 through 4 plus 3 ODST and Halo Reach and the multiplayer modes, yeah I'll take that. Speaking of multiplayer, what if I'm gonna be on this island with other people? Well it needs a multiplayer focused game, so here are 5 games to bring that are multiplayer focused. Super Smash Bros Ultimate, the best multiplayer experience in the franchise, no doubt. I know I said Brawl for my original list, but that was within the context that I'd be alone and ugly. If I'm with people I totally might just eat. I'm bringing ultimate. And when you're with friends, you gotta bring a Mario party, and I have got to pick six. I feel like you could pick pretty much any game from one through eight and you'll pretty much have the same experiences, but six is my personal favorite. It has a day and night cycle, and not every game can say they have a day and night cycle. That's right, f you, Attic Attack. Mario Party is just an easy game to play for as long as you want with friends. Each time you play, it's different enough with how random it can be to keep things interesting, so it's a prime candidate for a desert island. Wii Sports. I'd pick Wii Sports Resort, but I'm already dealing with all of this. Wii Sports will always be fun with friends, and I can play bowling or golf forever. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You got the most content out of any Mario Kart game, a solid battle mode, four players, and even more if everybody has their own switching copies of the game. Yeah, I'll take this as well. And Halo the Master Chief Collection. 
It's five full games with multiplayer, come on. And finally, let's go with the online oriented list. Super Mario Maker 2, you have my blessing. And it's a fun way to try and contact help. Smash Brothers Ultimate, yeah, the online in this game ain't that great, but it works. There's a large community playing this game and I can download cool user made stages and watch user made videos as well. This will be my entertainment. Grand Theft Auto 5, I mean, there's a huge online component here that's completely optional. I already picked this for my standard list, disregarding the online. Now with it, of course I have to. Minecraft, sure, I can enlist the help of Minecraft players to stop me from going insane. And Halo the Master Chief Collection. I'm not even a big Halo guy, but I can't beat that deal. And finally, let's consolidate everything to one five game list where no rules exist. Which five of all of these games across all of these lists would I pick if I could have online games, compilations, and I had multiple people with me? Rare Replay, Grand Theft Auto 5, Mario Maker 2, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. Maybe, I mean, I don't know, this is a weirdly hard list to make. So those were the games I'd consider to bring with me onto a desert island, but there are so many that would just make sense. Stuff like The Sims, Sim City, Civilization. I could play the Oregon Trail forever. But really, this isn't a definitive list, just games I personally feel like I could get the most out of over the longest period of time. It's truly just an opinion thing, so I'd really love to hear what others could play forever. Everybody has different picks, that's what makes this topic so interesting. And being stranded is great for us Brink players out there. GET ME OFF OF THIS F***ING ISLAND! Alright, well now I have a better idea of what kind of games I should start playing. It's not like I have much else to do, I mean all they have here is a 5 below. Like, come on, no wonder it's deserted.